you have started to understand system design and now you want to learn how can you scale up your application to a million users, correct? But before getting there, first you need to understand how do you even talk to a single user? How do you interact with them? In the world of computer applications, this is done via a client server architecture. And that is what we are going to discuss in this video. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. A client server architecture is of prime importance. In a nutshell, a client is someone who requests some piece of information and a server is something that sits on the other end and gives you that piece of information back. So this is how everyone is interacting with each other. Let us dive deeper into it and understand about it. Doing a quick recap, what are all the things that we know about till now? Up till now, we understand why system design is so essential and where would you find it in an interview? We also learned why scaling is necessary and what do you actually mean by it? And all along the way, what we were trying is, we were trying to relate it to an example of a bookstore. So you are able to connect things with an example that you see in real life. And that certainly helps you to understand things better, correct? So let us again start off with the same example. We have your bookstore over here, right? And let us say a person decides to come to your bookstore. Over here, you are the client, right? You are going to this bookstore. Now, what happens? Do you just go in the bookstore and then grab a book? No, right? There should be someone present over there in the bookstore that can answer your queries. They can tell you where the book is located, where can you find it, and how do you pay for it, right? So, in short, this bookstore will have some kind of a cashier or a clerk that can help you with all the information. So basically what is happening over here is you are the client and this cashier is the server. This is how you are making your interactions and that is how you are getting your job done. This is a very basic example how a client and a server architecture actually looks like. So what happens when you talk about computer applications? If you remember, this was how our computer application looked like. I have an app running that has a database, some disk and some CPU. And you can assume that it is located somewhere centrally. You are building this app somewhere, right? And wherever you deploy this app, this entire thing is called a server. Or you can also say it to be a cloud because cloud is nothing but someone else's computer. That's how I like to put it. This app or whatever application you have, it is uploaded somewhere and you want to interact with it. So what do you do? Who are your clients? Now your clients could be anyone. You could have a person who is accessing your application from a laptop. You can have another person who is accessing your application from a mobile phone. And then similarly, you can have all different clients as well. So this is how you're communicating. I have a server over here. And these are all the different type of clients. So what I am establishing is, is a client server communication. So you can say that either you or your web browser, that is the client. And this application is being hosted on a server, which is giving you back all the responses. Now this client server architecture can be made in a lot of different ways. It is not necessary that it is just an application. You can also have a gaming server. For example, you can have a game that is available on a lot of different platforms. So this game is hosted somewhere on the cloud and then you can have different devices that are connecting to the same server for information. So now all of these devices become your client and they will request all this information so that all of the games you are playing with each other. Similarly, there can be other examples of mailbox accounts as well. You know that if you purchase a mailbox account, then you have all these different clients that can access your email, correct? So once again, this is your email server. And from this email server, I have all of these apps that are fetching my information for me. In general, what you can say is a server is designed in such a way that it can handle all different type of clients. And all of this application is just based upon the usage and the scenario for which you are building your app. For the gaming server, only the gaming clients can connect to it. For an email server, only the email clients can connect to it. But if you have a web browser, for example, then 
all of these different type of devices, they have web browser too, right? So they become your client. So that is the general meaning of a client server architecture. And if you take back the example of your bookstore, you can have all different type of clients, right? All different type of customers, they are the clients and this store clerk is serving all of them. In general, what you can say is the client server architecture is the most fundamental building block. You are just establishing protocols, how a client and a server are interacting with each other. And once you are establishing this, certainly this system has its own advantages and disadvantages as well. If you think about it, what could be the advantages? Coming back to our example, over here I have a bookstore, right? Now, what did we do? In this bookstore, we hired a clerk or a salesperson. Now, what does this person do? This person is kind of a central resource. They have all the information about all the books that are available, all the sales that have been made, how many customers came in, how many bought a book, what are the profits. This person knows everything, right? So if you want to know anything about your bookstore, where will you go? You will go to this person, right? And they can tell you everything. Similarly, when it comes to system design, you are having your server over here, right? This is where your app is deployed and all the clients are connected. So this server, it has all the information. You know what type of people are coming to your application, from what geographies are your people connecting, what is the total hit count, what is the total visitor count. You have all of this information, right? And you can store all of this information in your database. So by this client server architecture, you are able to manage everything centrally. If you want to block a user, you can do this right over here. And then this particular user, for example, they will not be able to access your app. Think about it. Everything is centrally managed. For example, in your app, if you just make a small change, it can be reflected to every client that is connected. So it makes managing things very, very easy. The next advantage of a client server architecture is scalability. Let us say in my bookstore, I have this clerk and I get all of these customers. These customers are my clients, right? Now everything is going good. And this salesperson is able to handle all the customers coming in. Suddenly, let's say what happens is your store gets popular and a lot more customers starts to come in. So it could be possible that this particular salesperson is not able to handle all the traffic where traffic is all the customers that are coming in. That means some of your customers will return. They are not happy. So what you can do? One option that you have is you can hire a new person who is more qualified and who is more effective and who is more efficient. So what did you just do? You just scaled up your application, right? Now this person can handle all of the traffic and everyone is happy again. Similarly, when it comes to system design, this was my initial app. And let us say I was only serving a couple of customers right now. Suddenly your app got popular and you have a whole bunch of new customers coming in. Everyone will try to load up your app and then what will happen? Your app will slow down. So once again, the customers can get unhappy. So what do you do? You will start scaling up and you can scale up by increasing your CPU. You can scale up by using even more faster disks. You can scale up your database sizes. So what are you doing? You are again scaling up. We will talk a lot in detail about how you can scale, but this is the idea. By this model, you are able to just scale up at a server. You don't have to worry about the clients. You can scale up and handle all the new traffic that is coming in as well. So that is another advantage. Another advantage that you get inherently when you are talking about a client server architecture is flexibility. That means you can just deploy your app at one place in the world. And since it is internet, everyone from the world is able to access you. So this is all made possible by using the client server architecture. Now with every good thing, there are some disadvantages as well. And whenever you're designing anything, you must keep in mind all these negative factors as well. You might be wondering what could go wrong. So to start things, let us say I have this same cashier available at my bookstore. And now let us say for some reason, this person feels sick and isn't available to come to job Dante. What will happen? All of your customers, 
they are unhappy because the store is closed and there is no one to serve them. So what just happened? You only had a single point of failure. If this person is not present, then there is no one available to serve. So this is one disadvantage and equating it to computer science and computer applications. Let us say I have my application running on one server. Currently, everyone is connected. What if this service goes down? What happens if your disk gets corrupted or if you have any bad entries in your database? Once again, your app will go down and nobody will be able to connect. So once again, you are having a single point of failure. These are just some of the challenges I want to talk about. Certainly, there are ways that you can mitigate it. In a store, you can hire an additional part-time worker and they can serve you. Similarly, in a case of your application, you can have a backup database and a backup disk and then you can restore your application. So I just wanted to be aware that these are the challenges of a model that we have chosen for our interaction. The next challenge that you might face is network congestion. For example, in your bookstore, you only have one salesperson and they are handling the current traffic that you have. Suddenly, let us say you have more customers coming in. So what will happen? Every customer, they will have to wait a little more to be served, right? And this is what causes slowness in your service. Similarly, in your computer application, if there are no users connected or only a handful of users connected, your service is very fast. But as more and more people start to connect to your application, your application response time can slow down a lot. You will start to experience some congestion and your speeds will go down. So what can you do to mitigate this? In case of a bookstore, what I can do is I can hire two person at the same time. And then some of the people will go to the first person and some of the people will go to the second person. This is what you actually see in stores, right? And that is how these stores are handling all the traffic. In case of a computer application, what do you do? Instead of deploying your application only at one place in the world, you can deploy your computer application at two places in the world. So some bunch of people will be connected to server one and the other bunch of people will be connected to server two. And both these servers can be managed by a central database system. So these are just some of the methods that I am talking about to mitigate all of these challenges. Certainly there is a lot more involved, but I want to give you a brief idea. The last challenge I want to talk about in a client server architecture is security risk. For example, in your bookstore, if this particular person is compromised, what does this mean? It means that your thief can steal all of the resources this person had. They can have access to all the information about the bookstore and all the money. Similarly, for a computer application, your application get compromised just by hacking the server. So you can have a hacker who can directly attack your server if you do not have security protocols in place. And then this hacker, they can exploit your server. So you can see that these are some of the challenges. So how do you mitigate this? For example, in a bookstore, you can have security guards outside your bookstore who can take care of this particular thief. And when it comes to a client server architecture, what you can do is you can have some protocols like you can enable encryption, you can enable two factor authentication, you can enable passwords, you can enable pass keys. There are a lot of different things. It is up to you how you are implementing your design. And that is why I wanted to talk about all of these challenges. Because once you are implementing your systems, once you are coming up with all these designs, you have to talk about all of these things. Only then you will be able to build out a comprehensive solution. So all of this kinds of sums up how a client and a server architecture actually looks like. What examples do you think where you have seen this kind of a model? Tell me in the comment section below. And what other challenges did you find that I did not talk about? Let us discuss all of it and it will become a really good collection in the comments whenever you want to revisit this video again in the future. So once again, I would say that if you're finding these kind of videos helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This really keeps me motivated and I can come up with more such creative videos. Also, a huge shout out to all the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going and as members, you do get priority reply to your comments and early access to new videos as well. Stay tuned for my upcoming videos. Until then, see ya.